Coming up on Business Report Africa, U.S. trade rep nominee promises to review U.S.-Kenya trade deals. Flights and bookings cancelled in South Africa. FGOCP of Morocco signed $1.4 billion agreement on gas industrialization. Reps to investigate NNPC's missing barrels of crude oil. Details on these and more right after the break. <laughs> This is Business Report Africa brought to you by your digital first pan African news network, COS TV. I am Ruel Penao. Katrin Tai, trade representative nominee of the United States, has told the U.S. Senate Finance Committee that she will review all trade negotiations between the U.S. and Kenya if the U.S. Senate confirms her to this position. In response to queries from the U.S. Senate Finance Committee confirmation hearings, Tai said she will review the U.S.-Kenya bilateral relationship and the African Growth and Opportunity Act AGOA program if confirmed. She promised to chart a path towards that reflects the bid in Harris administration's commitment to a trade policy that puts the interest of American working families as a priority and determines how the U.S. may support African integration efforts. The South African variant of COVID-19 has placed the tourism industry of the country at the risk of losing out on millions of rands because of concerns. According to industry stakeholders, the variant has unfairly led to South Africa being set as a destination for tourists to avoid, and because of this major lucrative events, such as the planned Lions Rugby Tower were in jeopardy, even as accommodation and flight bookings were already being cancelled. The Tourism Business Council of South Africa, TBCSA, has said that the country needs to speak up on the fact that 41 other countries have seen a similar variant and this is not unique to South Africa. Countries like the United States and the United Kingdom have advised their citizens against traveling to South Africa and have set precautionary measures in place. About 18 other countries, including Australia, Belgium and Croatia, amongst others, have effectively closed their borders to travelers from South Africa. In this case, there has been a push to refrain from referring to the virus as a South African variant and instead use the scientific name of 501YV2. The federal government of Nigeria has signed a $1.4 billion agreement with OCP Group of Morocco to produce ammonia and diammonium phosphate in the gas industrialization strategy. Mr. Titi Lokwe Olubiyi, Communications Officer, Nigeria Surveying Investment Authority, NSIA, said the agreement was signed in Bengore, Morocco, and the project is structured to commercialize Nigeria's vast natural gas resources, satisfy Morocco's demand for cost-competitive ammonia. Project construction is expected to commence no later than the third quarter in 2021. The project will be sited in Aquaribum State, and the plant will also have a dedicated jetty to ensure smooth importation of raw materials from Morocco and other suppliers and export of excess ammonia and fertilizers to Morocco and potentially other regional markets. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Timmy Silva, who led the Nigerian delegation, gave assurance of President Muhammadu Buhari's commitment to the actualization of the project. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC in Nigeria, has described Ponzi schemes as a threat to investors' protection and the development of the company. Lamido Yuguda, Director General of the SEC, said the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, low interest rate environment, and the increase in use of online services have propelled the resurgence of illegal investment outfits. He then ordered Nigerians to stay away from fake financial experts who pose as short-term money doublers while stating that the SEC has a statutory duty to promote investor education and capacity building in market operations, and the program will allow participants to learn ways of bringing an end to Ponzi schemes in Nigeria. There's more coming up on Business Report Africa. I will be back after the short break.
The House of Representatives has made plans to investigate the alleged missing 5.2 million barrels of crude oil under the District Sales Direct Purchase DSDP policy of the NNPC that gives crude oil to refiners in exchange for distilled products. On Wednesday, March 3rd, the lawmakers resolved to investigate the policy from 2018 to 2021 in a bid to find how the millions of barrels of crude oil which were allocated to the local refineries were diverted and now unaccounted for. A lawmaker argued that the House should investigate the ability of the local refineries to refine the product and in conclusion, the Green Chamber mandated its Committee on Petroleum to conduct the investigation. Since the onset of the pandemic in March 2020, American multinational technology company Apple closed down all its 270 stores in the United States. Recently, those doors have been thrown open again and business has commenced physically, with some stores requiring appointment-only visits while some others opt for walk-ins. To ensure the smooth running of operations, stores in the country will still require customers to follow safety guidelines such as social distancing, wearing of masks, maintaining reduced occupancy and checking of temperatures upon entry. As customers are hoping to resume old shopping habits soon, Apple is expanding its physical presence by planning to open 17 mini stores in Target. Analysts in South Africa have raised concerns around the National Small Enterprise Amendment Bill and the harmful effect it could have on businesses in South Africa in the long run. The draft bill, which was published published, pardon me, for public comment on December 11, 2020, is set to change the manner in which government deals with the impact of legislation on small businesses, regulate relations between small and other enterprises, and introduce a new dispute resolution process, including the concept of unfairness in contractual dealings. To achieve this, a new small enterprise ombudsman service, which will act as a support function to the minister, will be introduced. However, the Free Market Foundation pointed to concerns around this ombudsman service and the powers this will have. The bill states that the minister on the ombudsman recommendation may prohibit certain practices in relation to small enterprises as being unfair, including the transfer of commercial risks to the weaker party. The Small Business Institute, SBI, had raised similar concerns about the absolute power given to both the minister and a proposed ombud potentially encroaching on and overriding already established civil and contract law in South Africa. Kofu Mlewa, a city businesswoman in Tanzania, has lost a five-year court battle for a 264 million shillings compensation from the Tanzania Revenue Authority after they seized and auctioned goods she reportedly legally imported in 2014. Having re already paid 48.3 million shillings as penalties for the release of her goods before learning they were auctioned, this decision of the Court of Appeal to dismiss her appeal on the matter has served as a twofold hit for her. The the case was dismissed on the grounds that the court was not a proper forum to hear the tax dispute and it should have been heard by the Tax Revenue Appeals Board, TRAB. And to wrap up our report today, Brad Garlin House, CEO of cryptocurrency Ripple, has filed a motion to dismiss the SEC's amendment complaint against him. He called it a regulatory overreach. On Twitter, the CEO announced his position on the SEC's charges against him and Ripple Labs Incorporated by sharing a link to the letter filed on his behalf saying that it speaks for itself. In, in this said letter, pardon me, the SEC's allegations against Garland House fail on account of a number of reasons. He was reported to have sold over 60% of his Ripple holdings for approximately $159 million at the time of those transactions, leaving him with 200 million Ripple tokens. The SEC then took a shot based on the alleged violation of federal securities laws. Ripple's lawyers have argued that these allegations of the SEC are vague with no particular reference to any of these transactions occurring within the United States. And on that note, we end Business Report Africa. Thank you for watching. Do follow us on social media at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at TOS TV Network. I am Ruel Penao.